which is one of my absolute favorite DIYs. First of all, it's super easy, it's super cheap, and it works great. So I'm gonna give you the list of ingredients super fast. Amy said she's gonna have them available um, in a document later as well. Scrubby paste, one cup of baking soda, a quarter cup of Castile soap, one to two tablespoons of vinegar, and 10 drops of lemon oil, voila, done. You can substitute different citrus oils for the lemon oil. I really like the lemon personally. It mixes up like a frosting and it smells so good and it's actually safe enough. You probably could sample it. I wouldn't recommend that. But the idea behind that is if you're cleaning your bathtub, for example, and you have little people and you're gonna stick your little people in the bathtub, do you want them swimming in chemicals from traditional cleaners? Probably not. When you're cleaning your surfaces in your kitchen or your kitchen sink that you prepare your food in, do you want your fruits and your vegetables and your meats touching chemical cleaners that are gonna leach into your, your food products? Absolutely not. So that's what I love about the scrubby paste because it's super safe, super affordable, easy to make, smells amazing, works like the bomb. Other things you can use it for besides cleaning, you know your patio furniture gets that kind of grungy, like a, like a, like a gray black, almost like a mil, mildew on it. Um, I use that on my patio furniture in the spring and the summertime. Um, and it's also great this time of the year if you're a gardener, put some of that on your nail brush and it scrubs your hands like lickety split, super clean. Um, and it works, it works great. It's got the power of the vinegar and the essential oils and not harmful. So it's great for cleaning. It's great for your patio furniture. Pool toys are another thing that kids' pool toys get really yucky, like your inflatables and stuff. Um, great for that. And I love it for gardening and landscaping hands this time of the year. So Amy's going to repost that recipe information. Give it a try. I promise you're going to love your scrubby paste. Thanks. Thanks, Sarah. I love it. Okay, Laura Whip. What a great segue, Sarah, because <laughs> I get to talk to you about um, making a gardener's hand soap. And really, that is, it's not a misnomer, but it's so multi-purpose. I just love this recipe. It's in the doTERRA blog, and Amy, of course, will have the recipe for you afterwards. But it exfoliates, it cleans, and it moisturizes all in one. And really what it is, is it's a sugar scrub. So you don't have to just use it if you have dirty gardening hands. Um, my gardening plans are way off in the future right now because we're having like a snowstorm blizzard squall up here. <laughs> and like there's no gardening happening anytime soon at my house. But I do love gardening and my hands do get dirty even with gloves on. I've used this on my feet. It's great because when you go barefoot in the summertime and your feet get really dirty, it is just great at scrubbing it off. What I compare this stuff to is that um, orange stuff that men use to clean after being in the garage and working on their cars. It's so highly toxic though. This stuff is super safe. You could eat it. So I started with a half a cup of sugar because it is a sugar scrub into that. You're gonna add some uh, two or three tablespoons of, oh, I'm sorry, one teaspoon of almond oil, but you don't have to use almond oil. Whatever you have, I have grape seed oil. You could use olive oil, you could use fractionated coconut oil, you could even use vegetable oil, uh, jojoba oil, carrot seed oil. So there's a lot of options for the oil and you'll use um, a teaspoon of that, then you'll add, three tablespoons of Castile soap. And this is Dr. Bronner's that I have. You can order that on Amazon right now because we're not going to the store much. Or you can get it at a health food store. And most grocery stores have um, a health food or organic section and you can get Dr. Bronner's there. And then the oils that we use are Clary Sage and uh, melaleuca or tea tree oil. And tea tree oil is a great one to use right now in this era of washing our hands and keeping everything sanitized because it's very anti-everything. Uh, so antimicrobial is the way to go. And so not only are you gonna clean your hands, but they're gonna be really sanitized too. Although in the summer, I substitute in some other oils that I really love. Um, one of them is grapefruit. 
I love using grapefruit uh, in the morning in the shower. On Guard is going to be really protective and it's very cleansing as well. Slim and Sassy is a really good one. It's the metabolic blend, um, but it's got citrus in it. It's going to do a good job of really cleaning your hands, your feet, whatever's dirty. And then the last one is even, uh, I have used Zendocrine in this recipe. And Zendocrine is a great one for um, cleansing your organs. Um, it's the, uh, Amy, help me out here. What blend, what's the name, the other name for that blend? Detoxification detoxification blend. Like I said, filtering your organs, right? <laughs> so I've even used uh, Zendocrine. Um, love the smell of it and it's cleansing as well with the citrus in it. And so you just stir that together, keep it in a glass jar or some sealable container and put it by your sink, put it in your shower and um, you're going to be like exfoliated and clean and moisturized. Thanks. That's perfect. Laura J. Hey guys, um, so I'm going to talk to you about a yoga mat spray cleaner, and I'm going to be honest, I didn't, I'm using my own recipe, I don't really measure things, so I'm going to do it my best, and then you guys will get the recipe from Amy, <laughs> but I'll, you can always watch what I did. So I have a glass container, and I'm going to use a funnel here, and I'm going to do part vinegar. So cleaning your yoga mat after every time um, you practice, especially now, is a really good idea. Um, or if you take it into a yoga studio, you know, you don't know what kind of germs you're picking up or um, just other people that have been on the ground and their stinky feet. Um, and then I'm putting half water. Um, you know, or if you do... Just like cleaning your surface for a yoga mat is really important. Um, I want to say we all know why. Um, and then, really you have two options. I've done it two different ways. You can use your on guard concentrate cleaner and put a tablespoon in there. Um, and I'm going to do that and I'm not going to measure it because that's how I cook too. Um, so you could do just that and that would be perfect. Or you can do it just with essential oils. I'm gonna do it with both. So I have wild orange, um, which I really add for the scent. Um, this is my favorite smell, but it's like all citrus oils, very antibacterial. And I put 10 drops. And then I'm gonna add five drops of On Guard And I'm going to add 10 drops of lemon. And then finally, I'm going to add 10 drops of Malaluca or tea tree oil. So it's super easy. And you can always get a smaller spray bottle if you travel to a yoga studio and you don't want to bring a big spray bottle um, and just stick it in your in your yoga mats um, but you're ready to go and if it was my mat like for my mat I just spritz it down and let it air dry out but you can also wipe it down if you want to with a cloth um, to be eco friendly and not have to use paper towels so that's how you make your own yoga green cleaning spray for your yoga mat thanks guys I thought it was perfect. All the people who aren't rounders who are specific on here, their minds just blew. They shorted a fuse, but I know you'll help them in the chat box. Thank you, Laura. That was awesome. Ask any questions. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to tackle the stove top cleaner. Can we just all pause for a moment? And can we think about, like, think about your stove top? Like, what's on it right now? You don't have to tell. I'll tell you. Like, there's probably some bacon grease. Gary made eggs. There's probably some of that on it. Um, what else is on there, right? It, this is just what happens to our stovetops. They get pretty yucky. So a super easy recipe you can use. These are the ingredients. Baking soda, check. We've all got that. Salt, check. We've got that. Apple cider vinegar, I would imagine you have that. Water. And the recommended oil would be purify essential oil, okay? So you stir, stir all the ingredients together and it makes kind of a paste. And then you spread it over the stovetop and the burners, okay? 
you leave it on for 15 minutes, um, maybe longer if you got some harder to remove stains. And then you can use a sponge to kind of scrub it um, and really work that and then wipe it clean. And that's it. You will have a clean stove. And when we're all able to have people over again, they will be like, your stove is amazing. Bob is up next. Okay, so I just have to do a shout out to Bob because he didn't know he was doing this until 7.15. So um, I just kind of uh, outed him. So here you go. That, that's how we roll. <laughs> um, all right, so I, I'll go up with Amy that I think the dirtiest thing in our house tends to be the microwave and the refrigerator. So I'm going to tell you how to make a doTERRA. Thanks for sharing that. Microwave, well, you, you'll know why in a second why I can say that. <laughs> Um, a doTERRA microwave and refrigerator cleaning solution because who among us, me, hasn't put, say, the tomato soup in the microwave, maybe put a paper towel on it, more likely didn't put anything on top of it, but turn it on for 45 seconds, walk away, of course, as the guy, I walk away, come back, and most of the tomato soup is now all over the inside of the microwave. And in the refrigerator, again, I tend to, if Melissa says, hey, can you defrost something? Sure, throw it in the refrigerator, forgetting to put a plate underneath it. And we all know that as meat thaws, all those good juice and blood come out all over the refrigerator. So the way to make a doTERRA cleaning solution is one cup of white vinegar. And I, I, like, I like Laura J's demonstration, I'm just going to tell you white vinegar, two cups of hot water, and the hot water becomes important in a second, and then 15 drops of doTERRA lemon oil. Put, add all of that into the shape to the spray bottle, and that it's as simple as that, you're ready to go. Um, one, two, so two, two tips, it's hot water for the refrigerator, because obviously your refrigerator, if it's like ours, is now we're shopping once a week, so it becomes empty. So on that evening before shopping day, make your solution and give your refrigerator a good cleaning. In the microwave, if that stuff is baked on, put a cu just put a plain cup of water in the microwave first, set it for say 45 seconds to a minute, that'll steam some moisture into the microwave, loosening up the hard tomato soup that I baked on earlier in the day. And that is how you make a simple microwave refrigerator doTERRA cleaning solution. Oh, that was, I am like, wow, mic drop, right guys? That was really good. It makes me want to go clean something. Um, okay, so I'm talking about garbage disposal refreshers. Um, I don't know if you're a nut like I am, but about two years ago, I decided our, ours had to go. Like I had somebody come in and put a whole new one in because it was just so bad. When you think about everything that goes down there, I mean, literally, yeah, can't even think about it. Kind of gives me the gags. So um, we, <laughs> I did a recipe for garbage disposal refreshers. So this is two cups of baking soda, a cup of salt, a uh, third a cup of water, no, sorry, a half a cup of water, and a third a cup of the Castile soap um, with 30 drops of lemon oil. And you mix it all up and you use one of these little fun little scooper things, scooper jobbies, pampered chef and you scoop it out it's like kind of like the consistency of wet sand and i made i made about ten thousand of them <laughs> i couldn't lie we made these together like a week ago because i knew i was going to forget um and they come out like well i'm having a hard time getting it out sugar but they're cookies. like sugar cookies <laughs> bob wanted, where am i bob wanted to eat these i wouldn't let him i'm sure you could you're supposed to put one to three of these with hot water down your disposal let it sit for a few minutes and then whirl it all up and it really is really refreshing and nice and um, keeps that bad, that bad baby in, in better shape than the way ours was before we had to replace it. So give it a try. <laughs> oh, you guys are funnier on quarantine life. Okay, um, Jerry, you're up. Okay, so I'm going to talk about wood polish. And um, as we know, you know, you don't need to polish your wood um, every week. You could do it actually every couple of months, two to three months, depending what it is. So our most prized piece of furniture is a dining room table that was from 
I think this is the fourth generation on Don's side of my husband's side of the family. And so it's about 150 years old, I think. So I've been using this wood polish that I've made um, for a couple of years now on our furniture. And um, what I really love about this wood polish, you can use a couple different oils, but the one that I choose to use is Arborvitae. And so it's um, a quarter cup of vinegar, a quarter cup of, I use olive oil, could be another oil, but I like the olive oil. And then you use 10 drops of your preferred essential oil. And I use Arborvitae, um, eight drops of that. And then I actually add two drops of the wild orange. And what I love about the Arborvitae is it comes from the giant Arborvitae tree. Um, the oil is actually, it's pretty cool. You go on Source to Yon Terre and you can uh, listen to the video on it, but it comes from the sawdust. So it's, it's, they don't cut down trees to make this oil. Duterte is all about sustainable and they use actually byproducts from the tree. So it's the sawdust, but they make sure that it's pure. And as they extract the oil from there, that's what, that's what this oil comes from. And um, I love it because it's a tree oil using to polish wood, right? What could be better than that? can't eat this though. The Arborvitae is not, a, it's not an oil that you can use internally, but you could just make it all straight with um, orange oil or the wild orange oil or the lemon oil too, if you choose to. So I love this. And what you would do is just spray it into your microfiber cloth, spritz, spritz. This is a two ounce bottle and, um, and then just apply it to your, your uh, wood furniture. And in between, little plug for Norwex. I have my Norwex mitt. So, or you could just use your plain microfiber without the wood polish. So there you go. Perfect. Em, you're up. Thanks, Jerry. Okay, perfect. So I am going to talk about the all-purpose spray, um, which I'm like, I'm very much like Laura. So if you're looking for like specific measurements, I will try, but it's like not how I roll generally. So I have one of these bottles I saw people ask. I think Melissa gave me this bottle like 100 years ago. Um, and I think it's 16 ounces. Um, but you can get these on Amazon. You, I mean, you can get these anywhere. I don't know if doTERRA has the spray bottles. I'm not sure. Um, but these <laughs> these are things I should know before I talk on a call. I'm doing <laughs> a so Amazon. 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 Go with Amazon, what I originally said. So... The easiest cleaner that you can do is using this On Guard Cleaner Concentrate. Put a little bit, like less than a teaspoon maybe, maybe a little over a teaspoon. There's measurements on the back. I never look at them. Squirt that in there. Fill the rest with water. That's it. Um, there's really a lot of flexibility and freedom when you're making your, your cleaning stuff. Some people like to add vinegar. Some people like to add lemon oil. Like there's so many oils that are antibacterial, antiviral, antifungal, that there's like a lot of freedom with that. So like Laura said, any citrus oils are really antibacterial. Purify is a great one. Tea tree is antifungal. If you want to clean your shower, you can add like maybe 10 drops of tea tree to that. But really like kind of of whatever if you're looking at your oils and you're like oh this for this cleaner yes yeah probably <laughs> like for an all-purpose cleaner usually if I have one specifically for the bathroom I will add a little extra on guard and a little extra um tea tree just for that antifungal benefit but there's tons of freedom so don't feel like oh, I'm going to do it wrong or not do enough or too much or whatever there really is a lot of flexibility so if you want specific recipes Amy will give you specific recipes but I'm like throw some oils in there and the concentrate and it's totally fine so that's kind of how I roll <laughs> It's so true. I think that's a good lesson. I put in the chat box. It's almost impossible to mess these up. It really is. Um, so thanks for that, M. And Susan, you're up next. Hi, guys. So um, I just wanted, I, I had to laugh because Amy started the conversation off with what could have been my testimony completely. Um, I did start essential oils in what I would consider my children's window liquor phase. Um, sorry, I should slow that down. Window liquor phase. And um, realized that when I had this little guy who is like walking around and all of a sudden they put their hands and then they put their face and then you know the rest of it. It seemed so disgusting that all those chemicals could now get ingested into that little body and I had no idea what was going on. So 
um, glass cleaner was exactly how I totally started my whole my whole life with that. So um, on the blog, this is glass. This is glass cleaner. I have no idea if this is a 16 ounce, but I will give you the actual conversation, which is basically uh, three quarters of vinegar to white vinegar to one quarter distilled water. So whatever amount of ounces your bottle actually holds, um, you know, eyeball it, okay? <laughs> Sorry if I'm giving you hives, Amy, with the, with the rounding thing. Um, and then the most important thing, and I absolutely love having a citrus smell um, to my house. It just is amazing. And so I use lemon. And so that was really easy. So with the white vinegar and some distilled water and essential oil of your choice, you can pick any one of them. And of course, I'm just in love with my lemon. You find a little label and you label it up and you're good. I just need to clarify, Susan, that of the two of us, I'm the recipe follower and Amy's the rounder. Surprise, Truth. surprise. Truth. Uh, that is a surprise. Look at this. I'm learning things. Okay. <laughs> Susan, that was awesome. Thank you. Um, I just put the recipes, again, the link to all the recipes in the chat box. Okay. And if you guys have um, questions now, this is the perfect time to be putting them into the chat box. We are going to be watching that. Um, some of you were answering as we go. Um, but you guys now, you can green your cleaning routine, right? That was a whole goal that you would be able to learn some of these things and easily make some changes in your home. Um, so before we kind of wrap up and do some giveaways, I just want to say thank you again for being on the call. I know life is crazy right now. I know evenings are crazy, um, but we really are all about, one second, let me decline him. Okay, we are all about education, and we really want people to have this kind of a space, even if it's a virtual space, to ask their questions in and to learn more about oils and honestly have fun while they're doing it too. We really don't want people to have their doTERRA oils and not know what to do with them. Um, we do this once a month for 30 minutes. Our next call in May is called Yes, We're Going There. <laughs> it's Monday, May 18th at 8 p.m., and the t we're gonna cover all sorts of different topics like essential oils and natural support for autism and sensory disorders, intimacy, pain, and autoimmune, autoimmune issues. Like, yes, we're going there, okay? Um, we'll do our giveaways again, it'll be really fun. The registration link, let's see, let me get this in the chat box. Um, Are we inviting Bob back for a call that talks about intimacy? You know, I think dad's off the call. Moving on, moving on. The registration link is in the chat box. Okay, if you're on this call and you're not a part of our doTERRA family, we have something kind of special for you. Um, the best place for you to start your oil journey really is with an experience of oils, right? That they really do work. Um, so my recommendation is to reach out to whoever invited you to be on this call, um, or to me if you don't know who that is, for a free sample um, that would be something that you would like to use in oil or something that would be helpful for something you're trying to work on in your home, a health goal. Okay, so connect with one of us. All right, are you guys ready for um, the winners? Okay, I have to change my screen so I can see everybody here. Because I want to see everybody cheer silently when this happens. And also watch me really have a hard time at last names. Sarah Boro, Boro something. Sarah B. Borowiak, maybe. Borowiak. It, I'm going to go with that. Yes, it's Borowick. Thank you. Hello. <laughs> hey, Sarah. You're getting a, um, a bottle of On Guard, okay? So, oh, um, thank you. Yes, 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 yes. We'll be getting in touch with you. Um, Kale, I see Kale's on. Kale, you got, you want a bottle of Melaleuca of tea tree oil, okay? Um, I'm not going to bother with your last name. Okay, cool. Um, Ronnie, um, Ronnie Arians is on here. Ronnie, uh, you want a bottle of peppermint. Thanks for being on. We've got Missy Myers. She won a bottle of wild orange and then like a glass bottle to make, um, my mom's holding it up, to make one of those scrubbing paste or cleaning recipes in, okay? And then the last winner is Kelsey Martinez. Um, and she is winning a bottle of lime. So if you won, you're gonna hear hey, from- 
Yay. And you'll hear from one of us. If you want to be our best friend ever, send us your address so we don't have to hunt you down. Then I'd be your best friend forever. That would be me that would be hunting you down this time. And yeah, I have no capacity. So send me your address, please. Send your address so we can send you your stuff. Okay. Um, so we'll see you next month. Okay. For yes, we're going there. Um, if uh, some people are having an issue with the link. Oh, you'll have to reach out to me because, well, um, if you need to sign off, go ahead and sign off. I can stay and work on the chat box a little bit. Um, but we hope everybody has a great night and we'll talk to you soon. Okay. Oh, well, BOGO week. Don't forget BOGOs. Why are you going like this, mom? Did I forget it? Did I sleep through you talking about it? I just want to make sure. It's BOGO week. Buy one, get one all week long. Today is serenity and balance. Um, if you miss that, it's like, just going to keep everybody happy right now. It's going to keep us all sane. That's really what they're for. And yeah, that one the expires at midnight. So it does yeah. expire at midnight and the BOGO boxes are almost gone too. Okay. Um, so yes, yeah, sorry. Anything else, Melissa? That was good. <laughs> no, that's it. I think we've got it. And it's exactly eight 30. All right. Everybody have a good night. See you. Bye.